Hey everyone, welcome to Lachlan Likes a Thing, the show where I take a thing and see whether or not I like it. Now the thing we're looking at in this video is the JDS Labs Objective 2 Desktop Amplifier and DAC combination. Uh, and this is the limited edition black version. Um, now in case you haven't heard the story uh, behind this amplifier, and forgive me if you've already heard this story, I know a lot of people have heard this repeated many many times, but the story behind the Objective 2 is that it was designed by a mysterious gentleman or a mysterious gentlewoman known as NWAV Guy. And basically on a bunch of forums, uh, the guy publicly uh, slagged off a bunch of uh, high-end amplifier companies by saying that essentially uh, they were selling giant ripoffs. And he claimed that he could design uh, a high-performance headphone amplifier using DIY off-the-shelf parts. Um, and he went ahead and did it. He, he designed the amplifier, he published uh, the entire design on his blog, uh, which I'll link in the description of this video. He made the entire design open source so anyone can build one, and he also designed a DAC to go along with it. And then, uh, as well as publishing a lot of material that educated a lot of people about you know, the various technical aspects of amplifiers and uh, things like output impedance, etc., etc., he disappeared. We don't even know if he's alive right now. Um, what we do know is that no one has really in that time been able to refute the actual technical merit of his original amplifier design. Um, and he's probably done more than anyone else in the industry to really educate people about the role, particularly output impedance plays on the, uh, the performance of a given headphone, which is just something that I want to touch on in a later video. There are several companies that now manufacture their versions of the Objective 2 amplifier uh, and ODAC, and since they are open source designs, anyone can really do this. Um, this one is from the US-based company JDS Labs. Uh, I actually own the original uh, Objective 2 and ODAC from JDS Labs, uh, and they loaned me this review unit because recently they made updates and they made this fancy new limited edition that I'll show you in a second. Um, but I chose JDS Labs because they're a really well-respected company and they have uh, a really good customer service. I mean, I've had many times where I've sent them an email and they replied in just a couple of hours, which is just fantastic. And before you ask, this is before I started doing reviews. So I'm very, very happy to recommend JDS Labs on the strength of their customer service. Anyway, let's take a closer look at these amplifiers. So here's my original Objective 2 amplifier uh, with the standalone ODAC, and you can see here they're connected by this um, cheap little FIO interconnect. Uh, and keep in mind that this is the standalone version of the Objective 2 amplifier. So it has a battery inside it, uh, and as you can see, I can press the power button and it turns on. The idea behind the battery powered version is that you can be isolated from mains power, just in case you want to avoid noise. And the other thing is that because it's battery powered, you can technically use this as a portable amplifier. Though, as you can see from the size, it's not really kind of like put in your pocket portable. It's more kind of uh, bring it with you and set it up kind of portable. So uh, I bring it to headphone meets. I quite like the battery for that reason. Now, the separate version of the uh, Objective 2 amplifier and ODAC, uh, the Objective 2 amplifier itself costs $129 and the ODAC costs uh, $149. But uh, you can actually buy a version which has both of them combined in the single package without the battery. So they take out the battery and they put the ODAC in that and that costs $279 as a single kind of package and then you don't have to do this kind of interconnect thing here. Uh, the other thing about the standard version of the uh, ODAC and Objective 2 is that the inputs on the Objective 2 are out the front. So we have a power input that you need for uh, mains power and also to charge the battery and it plugs in the front here uh, and then we have the uh, the USB cable which either plugs in the front on the uh, $279 uh, combined package or it plugs into the ODAC here. And as you can see here, it looks quite messy. You know, it looks a bit like a kind of DIY science project. Uh, the whole point of the limited edition, which is this version here that costs $349, is that the inputs have been moved to the back. So now we have a mini USB input on the back. We can just plug in here. 
and we also have the power input on the back as well. So we can just plug in that in there. And as you can see, it looks a lot more elegant. The other thing about the limited edition is that it has, as you can see, the RCA uh, line out at the back. This is good if you wanna go to a pair of uh, speakers as well, just to get the uh, output from the ODAC. And also the actual headphone, uh, the headphone jack has been changed from a 3.5 millimeter connection to a 6.5 millimeter connection. And I find that in practice, this is a big improvement because now you can use an adapter uh, to get your 3.5 millimeter uh, output, but also you don't have to have, if you've ever seen those big 6.5 millimeter, the 3.5, I'm sorry, 3.5 to 6.5 adapters, when you plug them into the front of something like this, they hang off the front, they put a lot of weight on the output uh, jack and you know it's not something that I feel comfortable with. That said, I have found adapters like this Sennheiser 6.5 millimeter to 3.5 that work quite well uh, with the standard version of the Objective 2. So this version doesn't sound any different. Uh, the performance is the same basically compared to the, uh, the standard versions of the Objective 2. The only thing is that this version is just a lot more elegant without the things hanging out the, the front and having this 6.5 millimeter uh, output jack. So before I get into the sound of the Objective 2, uh, I wanted to talk a little about the gain switches. Now, gain is the amount of actual um, amplification that the uh, amplifier does in terms of volume increase. So the default for the Objective 2 amplifier is a switch that switches between 2.5 times and 6.5 times gain. Now, one thing to note when you're choosing the gain for your Objective 2 is that you have to consider the volume knob control. So if the volume knob control is too low, what you'll find is that you'll get channel imbalance. So one side will be louder than the other. And if you go past, if you go too high and you go past about 12 o'clock on this volume knob, you start getting uh, noise from the amplifier. So what you wanna do is you wanna choose a gain setting that uh, gives you uh, a, a range of volume to move between these two low positions and the 12 o'clock position. In my experience, 6.5 times gain is actually too high for every piece of gear that I own personally. Uh, even when you're pairing with something like a 300 ohm Sennheiser HD650, uh, 6.5 times gain is just too high. And people also report clipping at the high gain setting. The 2.5 times gain setting is fine for full-sized headphones, but it actually is still too high for sensitive in-ear earphones. So you can clip the resistors on the Objective 2 so that you can change the 6.5 times gain setting to a one times gain setting. So you can choose between one times gain and 2.5 times gain, or you can request that JDS Labs do this for you before they ship the Objective 2 out to you. Now, one times gain basically means no amplification. However, there's still a point, you still get the benefits of the Objective 2's low noise output, uh, the low output impedance, and uh, just in general, all the good high performance characteristics of the amplifier. Technically, one times gain is also the highest performance setting uh, with the least noise. I use one times gain almost all the time because the majority of my gear is low impedance and even something like the Sennheiser HD 650 is actually perfectly happy on one times gain. So how does the Objective 2 sound? Well, it's a bit funny uh, describing the sound of the Objective 2 because the original design objective of the Objective 2 was to make an amplifier that only acted as a pure amplifier, uh, as a wire with gain. So that is, it would take the sound and it would increase the volume and it wouldn't add any coloration or any distortion or anything like that. And NWAV guys' uh, argument was that people think amplifiers sound different, uh, both because of things like placebo effect and bias, but also because some amplifiers, like tube amplifiers or some other kind of amplifier designs, deliberately add distortion or they change the frequency response or they have high output impedances which affect headphone uh, headphone performance. So what you'll find is that people would kind of choose these kind of exotic pairings between various different uh, amplifiers and their headphones. The Objective 2 is different. It's just designed to um, be an amplifier that just increases uh, the volume and has a really clean output. So it's kind of 
hard for me to describe a thing that's not really meant to sound like anything. What I can tell you is that this amplifier sounds like it could power almost anything. It sounds clean, uh, it sounds controlled, it has really low noise. I think it sounds great, but if you asked me to tell you um, more than that, I would actually find it hard to do. I have to tell you that when I actually sat down to do volume matched listening tests with my iPhone 5S, which is another high performance, uh, clean, neutral output, uh, low output impedance amplifier, it doesn't actually sound all that different. And this is whether I tested the uh, 5S versus the Objective 2 on a Sennheiser HD 650 or the New Force Primo 8 or anything like that. So maybe the Objective 2 sounds a smidgen cleaner than the iPhone 5S, but that could just be my imagination. And I gotta admit, I'm really surprised by that result. I know that the 5S is a high performance player, but I didn't think that it would be able to drive a Sennheiser HD 650 with any kind of authority, and it turns out it can't. This isn't a slight on the Objective 2, and it tells you uh, how good smartphone output has been getting. Uh, and I'm going to do more videos and just do some more comparisons and get a second opinion because it's really quite a puzzling result. But I'm starting to um, be quite uh, you know, firm in my belief that for most users, unless your existing source is really bad, like it has really high output impedance, or it has noticeable problems with noisy output, um, or that kind of thing. Unless you have that situation, I don't think dedicated amplification is necessary for most headphones. Um, despite all of this though, if you still want to get a dedicated amplifier for convenience sake, the Objective 2 and the ODAC is an output chain that you can be pretty much guaranteed is high quality and it will work with almost all of your gear well into the future. It's got benchmark leading performance uh, and again, as I've said, no one has been able to refute the basic claims that uh, NWAV game made about the performance characteristics of the Objective 2. Uh, it's benchmark leading performance at a reasonable price. So I think uh, that's pretty much why it's been the only desktop chain that I've ever really recommended. And now that there's this limited edition version, which is a lot more elegant and a lot more practical, and it's still reasonably priced at $349, I really can enthusiastically recommend that you can put one of these on your desk and you'll have a really good uh, source chain for your desktop listening. So just make sure that you put in the request to change those gain switches. Anyway, thanks for watching this review. Uh, click the like button if you found it helpful. You can talk to me on Facebook at facebook.com slash thing or on Twitter at thing uh, and happy listening.